Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you all again to a new session of Catechism Learning of Class 7. Let's begin our session with a small prayer. So I request all of you to join your hands, close your eyes and be in a prayerful mood. Heavenly Father, we come before you for a new session of Catechism Learning. Lord, help us to understand you in a better way. Allow us to know how we can be good Christians and set an example to others. May your Holy Spirit be our guide and our companion throughout our life. O Mother Mary, pray and intercede for us. Amen. So how are you all doing? I hope you all are fine. So in our last session, we were learning about the greatest commandment. I hope you remember what we learned in the last session. So when I was telling you about the greatest commandment, I told you about the line which is said in every Holy Eucharist, do this in memory of me. So this is the same line which Christ said to his disciples while having his last supper. What exactly this line really means? It is nothing but an invitation to the meal of love that Christ has prepared for each of us. This meal of love is a symbol shown by Christ that an expression of love by Christ for each one of us. So love is something which is very important and we should see that every person has a different form of love, right? So whether it is parents, grandparents, siblings, friends, teachers, there are different forms of love that are expressed in different ways. Also, we need to understand that when we love somebody, we do take care of that person. We protect the person. We are constantly alert and want to know what is happening in that person's life. This is what love is. So when I say Christ's love or the love of Christ, Jesus' love, basically it is a love which is selfless, unconditional. And we as Christians have the responsibility to show this love, to share this love with the people whom we meet. So, when I say love of God, when there is this love as the basic fundamental to the greatest commandment, there are two types of this commandment. Like this commandment can be divided into two types, love of God and love towards the brethren. So when we talk about love for God, love for God can be expressed in various ways. Through our very little intentions and very pure heart, we can express the love for God. Also, when it comes to love for brethren, we should know how to live in a community in peace and harmony. So if we are in peace and harmony with our neighbors, with the people around us, we will be loved by all of them. Also, we can share our love with them. Later on, I was telling you about the love for enemies. Yes, so when I say love for enemies, you must be wondering, what is this love for enemies? But Christ has taught each of us about this love for enemies. He says that if you are loving somebody and that person is also loving you back, there is no gain in that. But you should learn how to love the person who hurt you, who, who, who is more like an enemy to you. Also, in the Lord's Prayer, we see that we will be forgiven by Father the way we forgive towards others. We forgive others' sins. So, in the similar way, we will be forgiven by Father. So, there is this new commandment given by Christ. Love your God and love your fellow people. So, love should be always without any selfish uh, Love should be always without selfishness, 
and it should be without any conditions. Now coming towards today's topic. So what are we going to do today? In your 13th chapter, the title says Precepts of the Church. So before I start telling you about the precepts of the church, I would like to ask you certain questions. In your schools, do you follow some rules? Within your house also, don't you follow some rules? I want to bring to your notice that any institution, whether it is home or whether it is school, whether it is office or wherever it may be, all survive due to certain obedience and discipline that is practiced within that institution. So when your mama says you have to do your homework, you have to do it, you have to obey your mother. When your daddy says that go and get something from the shop, you do go and get it because you obey your daddy. So this is how the institution of family works, where parents always want good for their children and children have the responsibility to obey their parents. At times we might feel like why am I the one always going and getting things from the shop? So that is somewhere our human will comes into existence. But if at all imagine the discipline and the obedience was not there. Do you think your house would have been functioned so smoothly? No. Do you think your school would have been functioned so smoothly? No. So whenever your teacher says move in a line, you move in a line, right? That is because they want you to move in a straight line and create less commotion. Same is the situation when it comes to church. Church has its own rules and we as the parishioners we as the faithfuls have the responsibility to abide by those rules. So the rules of the church have to be followed by each of us. When we start questioning those rules, there comes a little bit of friction between the people around us. So if we want to continue and remain in peace as a peaceful community, we need to follow the rules that the church is demanding us to follow. In the very first chapter, do you remember, we were talking about laws and the commandments. Why do you think the commandments were given to the people of Israelites? Only because God wanted them to travel and be the people of God in discipline. It should not be like they are doing whatever they feel like doing. When they are the people of God, they have to follow certain rules and have to listen to God. Church in today's time guides us at various steps how we can attain salvation. This guidance is what we call as precepts. So church has a very important role in each of our life. It timely guides us what we are supposed to do at various seasons. So there are various seasons in the church and we have different rituals during those seasons. All these guidance is provided by church. These guidance help us to grow spiritually and also mutually in community. At times we might feel like going away. But then this feeling of going away from the community or going away from the rules of the church will only create chaos. Take the example of prodigal son. Prodigal son wanted to practice his human will. He wanted to practice his autonomy. So what he did? He just broke all those rules and regulations set by his father, asked for money and left the house. And after that what happened we all know. Somewhere living a life without rules, without any discipline, without obeying, somewhere leads you into danger. That is exactly what happened with the prodigal son as well. He was safe and he was scared when he came back to his home. Jesus on one hand gave authority to the apostles to teach and guide the disciples or the followers of Christ. So these apostles 
living with Jesus, they learned a lot of things from Christ and they started practicing it. So Christ gave them the authority to teach and guide the people who wants to follow Christ. This authority given by Christ is what church is using today. Church somewhere has this great responsibility to teach and guide the faithfuls and believers more closer to Christ. Church somewhere also claims that through these precepts, through these rules, church has a pure intention to lead the faithfuls more closer to salvation. So some of the, uh, the various ways church is involved in leading a faithful towards salvation is through worship of God, reception of the sacraments and obeying the commandments. So these are the, some of the things that church is constantly doing so that the faithfuls are stuck towards the love of Christ, worship of God, reception of the sacraments and obeying the commandments. Let's move towards the word of the God for today. All those who abide by my commandment will have eternal life. So this we also learned in the first chapter where it was said that if you want an eternal life, you need to abide by the commandments given by the Lord. I have a small activity as well where you have to see in this week whether you are able to respect all the authorities and the ones who are in power in any of the institution. Now that can be your parish priest, that can be your father, that can be your teachers, that can be your principal. The condition is you have to obey and respect all of them. Let's have a quick revision to what we learned today. So we were talking about the precepts of the church. Why are these precepts needed in the church? Because any institution which has to function should have certain rules and regulations that are to be followed by all the members of that institution. Now whether it is your school, whether it is your house, we have our own sets of rules and regulations. Same is with our church. Our church has its own rules and regulations and we as the parishioners have the responsibility to follow them. When we start questioning these rules and regulation, somewhere the peaceful community get disturbed. So we have the responsibility to keep up the peace of the community. Same, uh, same as with uh, when it comes to church, we know that the church derives its authority to teach and guide the faithful from Christ himself. Christ gave the authority to the apostles to lead all the followers who wants to follow Christ. The same duty today the church is fulfilling. Church claims that it is constantly busy in leading people towards salvation through various acts such as worship of God, reception of the sacraments and obeying the commandments. So on that note, I would like to wind up with our today's session. Have a blessed day.